Okay. Well, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Talk the Ting. Um, first things first, we want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. We have a, a young, exciting guest with us tonight. Um, as you guys can see, I have my West Indies shirt on, you know, a massive cricket fan. Uh, massive, you know, no, I used to be a cricketer back in the day, but not so much anymore. Hmm. Play every once in a while. Tell us on uh, athletic now. Huh? Tell us on athletic now. Boy, nowadays it's just Nicely. work and sleep and yeah, all kind of thing like that. But yeah, we have a, a, a exciting um young man with us from from Dominica. Um, we'll be going into a lot of different things, including his recent experiences with you know in the Caribbean and touring and all that stuff. Um, we want to welcome Mr. Kevin Hodge to the show. Hi, uh, good evening, Dwayne. How are you doing? All right, yes, you. Going, Kev. What's going on? How are you doing? Good night. I'm doing pretty. Yeah, good night. I'm doing pretty okay. How are you guys doing? We're good, man. We're good. Doing good, doing good, All doing right. good. All right, so, that's nice. Couple things before we start. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items. Obviously, like we always do, you know, you guys are welcome to comment, share the video, share the live, share the live. Um you know, sure, welcome to ask questions, uh, welcome to comment in the chat, which we will, if you guys have any questions, we will gladly get them to Mr. Hodge. Um, we will make sure that you guys um, are able to get the specific questions you want to get to, to the young man and, and um, ask him about some of his challenges and, you know, all of that stuff. I see him facing some fastball in there, they're they ducking for his life. <laughs> Uh, how was it? How was the day, man? How was the day? How was everything going with you? Uh, it was. I, it was. Good, 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 Raju. Nah, I say today was a today was a was a good day, man. You see, I had I had no energy, but I had no cafe, man. Well, you know what? That, that is my fault. That is my fault. Bro. So. So, Kevin, I, I, I was, I was telling you before we came on there. I was watching, you know, you guys best versus best, um, and your team came out victorious. So we'll get into that a little bit. But before we even start off with the Kevin, give us a little bit of a background on yourself, and you know, um, from Kevin, little boy, you know, to Kevin now. Give us a little rundown of Kevin and tell the people about yourself. Um. Well, firstly, I grew up in the village of Atkinson. Um, it's on the east part of the island. It's the countryside. Well, to be honest, everywhere in Dominica is country. Um, but yeah, it's a small little village. Um, there's another part of it called Antrizo. That's exactly where I grew up, um, close to the beach. So obviously, I spent a lot of the time on the beach. Um, actually, that's where I started playing cricket. And then obviously, you know, uh, went on to play for the village and then in primary school and secondary school and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I grew up with my mom, uh, my grandmother, my sister, my uncle, um, uh, and then, you know, some relatives that live, you know, close by. So it was it was pretty a tight-knit family, you know, a lot of love. Um, obviously, I was kind of like the only male in my family, so I was pretty mischievous. Um, <laughs> I, I still... I still have that with me up to this day. So, um, but yeah, uh, you know, pretty quiet um, neighborhood, you know. So you'd either find me on the beach um, or on the field or climbing a mango tree somewhere. So we had a lot of mango trees around, a lot of fruit trees. So uh, up to this day, that's still, you know, with me. I, I love mango. You know, I would, every country I go, I would find a local and I would say, yo, I need some mango. So, yeah. But yeah, um, like I said, you know, pretty, pretty quiet, um, you know, just, you know, easygoing, um, relaxing. I think that that has stuck with me till, till this day. And I'm, I'm pretty easygoing, you know, I enjoy my own company. Um, and, you know, mischievous whenever I get the opportunity to, but yeah. Any, any carib roots? I mean, you're so close to usually a lot of caribs that happen to be in Antrizo and Atkinson, that area. <laughs> Um, I would I would think so. My grand my grandmother's a carib. Um, Kalinago, Kalinago. Let's be polite. Let's be correct. <laughs> Kalinago. My apologies. I, 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 
<laughs> I stand corrected. Yeah, I think my, my grandmother has, you know, some Kalinago in her and my mom as well. Um, uh, I wouldn't say that it missed me because as you can see, but um, I think, yeah, there's, there's some Kalinago in me. So, yeah. So with that said, no. I you say why why not you say that Rajiv? Actually said that I'm true as well. Wait, where is that? Yeah, that's that's right. That, 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 <laughs> brother, I never <laughs> heard that before in my I, life. Yeah man, it's a small I think it's just before you reach the um that, that London Dairy Bridge. It's on the wow, 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 wow. We'll go in airport there, I think. Yeah. But they really say you learn something new every day. I, I never heard that place before in my life. <laughs> wow. But um, so Kevin, you say you like mango. You're a bit mango then. Grafted. I'm a grafted guy. Why? Hey, what? Hey, hey, give me more hard knocks there, my brother. You don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> grafted mango is it? I mean, you're black. First of all, first of all, yeah. I hear a man say he like mango, and then say grafted mango is his favorite mango. But you're joking, man, Rajiv. But you're a tough guy, brother. So uh, you say you started to play cricket on the beach. Or well, around what age was that? You know, you first started getting into cricket and stuff. Uh, around uh, five, five, six years old. Um, it was pretty young, and obviously I played with the older guys in the village, so I kind of had to learn the hard way. Um, and then we used the, uh, the 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 wind ball, but it was like a four ounce ball, so it was pretty heavy. Heavy. Yeah. It was yeah, yeah. It was pretty fast. So, like I said, I had to learn the hard way, but you know, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it kind of toughened me up a bit. So it's something that I really enjoyed. And obviously, you know, I took to the game and just, just continue with it, you know. So, yeah. where, where did you go to um, primary school and, and high school? And was cricket ever present throughout all of that? Um, I went to the Atkinson Primary School, obviously, because it's, it's right there in my village. And then I went to the uh, St. Andrews High School. I actually, I actually wanted to go to Cassibur Secondary, but um, the, the morning, I think I was on, I was on tour for under 13 or something like that. So when I came back, um, you know, I had to be rushing and everything like that. So when I came back, there was a lot of competition for spaces at the school. So when I called um, the morning, they said that, you know, there was no spaces left. So I was like, hmm. wow. wow. So I, yeah, so I went to, um, we went down to St. Andrews High and then, you know, we registered me there and stuff like that and it got through. So I, to be honest, this day I was, I'm, I'm grateful for it because um, St. Andrews, St. Andrews had a, a pretty, you know, big interest in sports, especially cricket, and we did very well. So up to this day, I always think back and said, if I, if I went to Castlebury Secondary, things might not have turned out so well, you know, right, so. Right, right. All and then from, right, and then, when I was in third form at St. Andrews, this, I think it, it closed down and they opened Northeastern Comprehensive. So Mary got secondary and the students from St. Andrews High merged into that. And then that was a, a you know, bigger, you know, cricketing fraternity. So it's something that I really enjoyed. The competition was high for spaces and um, there were a lot of individuals that I knew, you know, from the younger age group of cricket. So, you know, we, we we meshed well and, you know, we played some really good cricket. And, you know, I was really grateful for that. So, you know, it worked out well. I mean, I got refused in one school, but, you know, huh. I got accepted in another. I wonder if Cassidy should take you now, boy. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a bit too late for that. So, yeah, they would have to accept someone else. I mean, yeah, so, yeah. I, remember, I remember when we used to play um, high school cricket, it was... Um, um, St. Andrews had a good school, man. I remember this guy, a uh, left arm bowler, man, Kozia. I was a good bowler, man. I remember him. Um, I remember this other guy I played with um, from Marigot. Tall left arm bowler. They always produce good cricketers from up that side, up that side, man. I can't remember his name, but. but um, um, so, from, from Marigot, you say? He's from Marigot, yeah. I think he's he working, he working um, at the airport. Saw, yes, yes, yes. I saw him in yeah, the airport when I came on the last time. Is, that's curving, curving Alfred. We just call him Redhead. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah he was, he was pretty fast. Bowler, man. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, he was pretty I fast. Remember, I remember playing against him when I played in college and stuff. So now, so now going through schooling and, and cricket and stuff, and you being a young man trying and get, you know, into cricket, what was, what was the toughest thing you would say when you started playing with people that, you know, I guess were older, I don't want to say better, but, you know, what was the biggest challenge you would say? 
early on in your cricket. Well, when you meet the rest of Dominica, when you see right. players outside of St. Andrew, what, what was that? Um, I think the, 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 tough, the toughest thing was, um, I, to be honest, I would just say believing in myself. Obviously, I was very short. I kind of still am short, but I was very <laughs> short. So when you, play, <laughs> when you play against guys from college and, and all that thing, you know, you'd be like, wow you know but you know it's one thing to to try and you know play against these guys um and knowing that you could do it but it's another thing to actually do it you know so i think once i was able to you know score runs against guys from college and and and, and um you know the other schools then you know i started believing myself so i think the biggest thing was believing um i really like this sport so i didn't really compare myself with the others that much well, obviously, I really wanted to do well. So it, that was just, you know, the biggest bar in believing, hey, I could play against the guys. And then it just it just turned out well, you know? So, yeah. So, so I, I mean, apart from cricket, what were some of your other interests in school, though, in terms of academics? Nothing? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't get me wrong. I actually, I, I did um, economics in, in, in State College. Um, but obviously, you know, a lot of it was... Uh, a lot of the education that I received, it, it was uh, funded through cricket, obviously. Um, you know, I got scholarships to go to a state college and then to university. So obviously, you know, and to stay at these institutions, you have to do well in school. Right. And then, you know, so obviously, yeah, I did economics um, at state college. Um, unfortunately, I was traveling a lot, you know, for cricket and there wasn't really anything in place for student athletes was leaving the island that often. So it, it was really a challenge for me. Um, there was nothing really in place to come back and, you know, get work online and stuff like that. So um, I think that's where the, the Cricket Association, um, they, they reached out to the university. And um, they kind of, the university kind of took a leap of, of faith with me um, in terms of, you know, recruiting me. Um, so normally what would happen is the, the head coach, they would, you know, go out and scout and stuff like that to the other countries. But obviously, they didn't come to Dominica. So, you know, they, they kind of took a leap of, of faith with me. Um, I guess they heard about me, you know, by the great final or whatever. So I, I got a scholarship to the university. And it, it turned out well, you know, I graduated. Um, you know, I captained the university teams. And, you know, it was just a really great experience. You know, so I'm grateful for it. Uh, and that's always the biggest challenge as a student athlete, you know, doing school and playing cricket at the same time it's not easy trust me and you know that's one thing we always talk about is it is not just about school and, and cricket it prepares you for life because you know you have to study you have to train you have to do well and then you yep. have to play well so it prepares you for all aspects of life you know at some point everybody's gonna have a family you're gonna have to work you know you're gonna have to do all the things and you have to find a way to balance it so you know it, it was it was really good and you know i'm just fortunate I'm grateful for, you know, to be able to go through all that. Is it tailored towards, like, considering it was a sports scholarship, is there any sort of tailoring towards, like, an athlete, like any, you know, um, any arrangements that were made to make sure that you'll be able to play, but also be able to get your school done or not? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, example, like, if I would be on tour during the semester, um, I would be able to do my work and submit it online. So after long days of cricket, you know, spending a day and a half chasing ball or batting, you still have to come back to the hotel while the roommate is sleeping or out. You have to sit at the table and do the assignment, you know, study, do the work and submit it whenever I have to. Uh, don't get me wrong. There'll be sometimes when I get back to school, I'll be sitting in the classroom like, what's <laughs> going <laughs> <laughs> what's going on and some of the lecturers would be like welcome back Mr. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it, it, it was tough it was tough it was a real it's okay to be motivated to want to do it but you have still have to be disciplined because there, there yeah. were times when I was just like ah but you know you still have to do it so but there were a lot of provisions you know there was um, lecturers who you know who would have you know classes and to make sure that you know you grasp the concept of what you missed and stuff like that so, so it was, you know, it was... Was yeah. cricket your, your only extracurricular activity or you were able to squeeze in something else? Were you at, were you, where were you at? Were you at Cable? Yes, I was at Cable in Barbados. I used to play all the sport, but just for fun. 
Um, cricket was the main thing. Back in St. Andrews, I used to play volleyball. I like volleyball. Um, but yeah, I think obviously I knew that I wanted to play cricket professionally. So obviously I would, you know, really just focus on that and, you know, holding on that as much as I can. Um, but other than that, yeah, I just play some, you know, football if we warm enough with the guys or volleyball. I like volleyball. Especially Let beach me ask volleyball. you one question for the, for the UE people that are probably listening. Did you, did you stay on hall? I did. So you were, so when you were I, what, the lock or, or warrior? Let me let me let me get to that. So when <laughs> I first came, when I first went to UE, I actually came in late. So the the semester begin began at, in September. So I I I went in October because I was on tour okay. again, you know. So halls was full. Um, so I had to you know live off halls for a bit, and then the starting of the next semester, then I moved on to Sherlock Hall, Sherlock Hall. Um, and again, I, I wanted to go on Frank, but obviously it was full. But then, you know, being on Sherlock, I realized it's a really, you know, a, a tight knitted, you know, dorm. You know, it's a family oriented dorm. Um, so I was sport, sports rep for, for that dorm. And I was also Grub King. I don't know if, if you know what a Grub King is. I think that, I think that's really to like when you start off in that. Thing you do right think. so when they when the fresh when the friend when the freshman and the freshets you know they come in for the first time you have to grub them so right. it's orientation you know to get everybody to know everybody but we call it grubbing so you you line them up four o'clock in the morning you give them names you make them do chants and all that stuff wow, wow. and i had I, <laughs> so, yeah. so there's there's a theory behind all of it you know, so it, it's it's like it's orientation. It prepares you for UE and stuff like that. And you get it actually works. You get to know everybody because you know you're coming into a new country for the first time. You see, you're gonna see everybody almost every day. You know, so I had my fear show when I just entered um on hall. So obviously, you know, I I guess I portrayed some form of you know leadership. So I was selected to be grub king. So when the new batch came in, I got to lead the, the troops and. You know, got everybody you know involved and stuff like that. But it was it was pretty good. So you said you said you used to be on tour a lot. I mean, how was the experience the first time you left? I mean, I don't know what age was that. What was it? What was the first time you went on a tour? How old were you? I think I was ten or eleven. Ten or eleven. Wow. I think I was ten. Yeah, I was. I was ten years old. I was four. That means that means yeah, 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 in high school yet. You didn't start high school yet? Nah. Nah, wow. Was, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so so 10 years old, right? Going on tour your first time with, I guess, a bunch of young other Dominican players. How was that yeah. experience? Go, you know, the first time you went on a tour? <laughs> it was exciting. You know, you don't know, you don't know what to expect. Um, you know, you're going to a new country, you get to play cricket. It was just fun. It was just all fun, you know, obviously. And the guys that you travel with, you know, you've been around them for a long time, training and preparing and stuff like that. So it was a, a, a real nice family, obviously, you know. Anyway, Dominicans are, they gel yeah. together nicely. So, um, but I was, like I said, I was probably the shortest in the group. And the thing is, from under 30, I was able to play under 13 and under 19 at the same time. So I had one more year at under 13, but I was playing under 19. And I remember we went to Barbados in, in a Sagari Sobos competition. Mm. And there was there was bunk beds, so funny enough, my bed was on top. So yeah, I'm how, sure how, it, how you how I, you end up getting a top bunk? I, I know. Why you in there? <laughs> so <laughs> what had what had to happen was you know my teammates had to lift me up and put me on the bunk bed, you know, get me on top. Yeah, because I was really really short, like really really short, oh. and I was opening the batting and all that good stuff, but. You know, yeah, it was it was really good fun, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, so now, I mean, like many people who play sports, like I asked you a question before. So, you 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 start playing, you know, for Dominica or under thirteen, whatever it is. But when was the first time you face a, a a bowler that was bowling so fast that you start to reconsider if you actually want to play cricket or you have to uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um. I think that same on the 19 when he went to the Gary Sobos, there were some really fast guys. Um, because I was 12 years old and I had guys yeah. um, 18 and 17. So 
I they were really fast. I think I got hit a couple of times, but I didn't I didn't reconsider. It. I mean, I knew that was like I said, even from the beach days, you know, we played with the bigger guys. So, you mm-hmm. know, I, I learned it, I learned it tough. To be tough. So yeah. obviously, you know, exactly. So um, you know, playing at that level as a you know, 12 year old, I mean, yeah, I did get hit a couple of times, but I didn't I didn't uh at, at any point think, you know, why what am I doing or anything like that. I mean, it just you know, just trying to find a way to cope with it and figure out how I could get better, I guess. But yeah, I guess, like I said, it was just having fun. And I didn't, I didn't really take it too serious that, at that time. Yeah. I know, I know, I, I mean, I know you have played with um, some of the biggest players in the world in the, you know, in the CPL. And, and if you yeah. don't know, that's the Caribbean Premier League, which is the Premier 2020 um, tournament in the Caribbean. Um, how was, how was, how were how those experience experiences playing with you know some of I guess your cricketing heroes, some guys you saw on TV that maybe you never thought that you would get to play alongside? How was how was, the, how was that experience? Uh, it, it's um it's an amazing feeling. Um, because it's one thing to sit and, and look at these guys on TV and you might wonder, you know, I wonder what kind of person he is. But you the thing is, you only see when you're looking at them on TV, you only seeing them just playing. But you know, when you when you're in the dress room, it's a different story. You realize that a lot of these guys are just clowns, just like you know, they talk shit. They do all kind of stupidness. But obviously, when it comes to cricket, they're very professional. But it's a it's a really great experience just to see how they go about doing things, you know, how they prepare, how they play. Uh, you know, to emulate that, you know, that get that kind of knowledge straight from the horses mouth. You know, it's it's irreplaceable, you know. So it's something that I really I really am grateful for. Um, I think the first time I was kind of shell shocked. I think it's the first year we had Herschel Gibbs, and I think is I'll be Marco um, on our team, and Miss Battle Hack. So I was just like, <laughs> I was just sitting, I was just, sitting, just looking around. But obviously, you know, I was a bit, as I got older, I was a bit more, you know, outgoing. You know, so I made a lot of, you know, relations with the guys. You know, um, Herschel and I, you know, we still speak to this day. I think his birthday was like two days after mine. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's a great experience. And I always look to, you know, keep in communication with these guys because, you know, they know so much. If I have mm-hmm. any questions, you know, I always, you know, ask them and stuff like that. So, yeah. So do you have a you have a favorite cricketer and have you met him yet? Um, well, my favorite cricketer growing up was Sachin Tenduka. Unfortunately, I've, I've never met him. Um, Probably you but, just... Ah, I probably know that he's, he's long retired but um, currently my favorite player is David Warner um, and I've been fortunate enough to meet him and play with him obviously for, for St. Lucia Zooks um, you know he is someone who is very professional on and off the field um, so there were times during the CPL and I would, I would rock up to the pool or something you know with a, a conquer so I'd be like with his Australian accent, obviously, I can't repeat, yeah. but you know, like, oh, gee, what, 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 what are you eating? You know, he's like, you can't put, you can't put trash in a Ferrari, in a Ferrari engine and expect it to work, you know? So that's how these guys think. Um, but yeah, you know, we still talk up to this day, you know, if I'm going on a tour, or, you know, going through a, a difficult patch, then, um, you know, he would, you know, I'd, I'd go to him or ask him, you know, what would he do in a situation or how he goes about doing different things. And, you know, he, He's very experienced. He has a wealth of knowledge, so I just try and pick his brain whenever I can. So how many how many passports you go through already? You guys know you travel to a lot of places already. <laughs> uh, three, <laughs> only three. only three, only three. Okay. Yeah, only three. I, I maybe go through three, but it's not due to them having too many stamps. They they expire. But um, <laughs> I know you went to Australia, man. When you were what seventeen. Right, you you yeah. went to Australia, um, you know, for the for come. Give us a little bit about that experience, going going over there and playing with some of the coming I mean, young Australian players. Wow, ah, that was to the journey too. Yeah, it was. I think I got selected. Um, I don't know why I got selected, but I was fortunate enough to be selected. I think it was after an under nineteen tournament um, with the West Indies under nineteen. Um, I think I got MVP of the tournament that year. So it's like the six countries, from, um, Windward Islands, Leeward Islands, Trinidad, Jamaica, Barbados, Guyana. So we have this under-19 tournament and then I got MVP that year. And then they had this pool of guys where they had to select from. I think Tyrone Theophil was part of that group as well. 
yeah, some of the guys from yeah. Lu- yeah mm-hmm. from, um guys from St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Greta, um Jamaica guy. And then I was selected. So I got the scholarship to go to Australia for three months. Um live there, live with a family who just you know, their son plays cricket as well. Um and if it was it was really good. I mean, you know, just to experience the, the culture, um, you know, how they go about things over there. It's totally different, you know. I obviously going over there at 17, and most of the other guys were 19 and, and 20, 21. Um, Joe Root was a part of that um, group as well. Um, so, you know, every time we come back to training in the morning, you know, they would have all these stories, you know, when they went out to club and stuff like that. I'm 17. I can't go to no club. No one alone. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just, I would just, you know, just, just sit and listen, you know, to the stories, what, what went on and stuff like that. And, you know, just enjoy it. But it was, it was really great, um, you know, to share ideas and, and learn from, from different coaches, you know, and also the opportunity to play club cricket um, at the, at the um, district level. Um, so I think at the end of the the, the the season in that district, there's a, a medal called the Don Bradman Medal. Um, and even if I was, I was only there for three months, I was like half the season. So I came in third in line to receive uh, that medal for outstanding performances. Um, behind who? I mean, the club, excuse me? Third behind who? I don't know. I was just okay. told, I was, I was just told I was third in line to receive it, you know? So, I mean, just being third in line, I mean, Adelaide is a massive place, you know, hundreds of thousands mm-hmm. of people live there, you know, so it was just, I was just like, Ooh, that was a, you know, good achievement. Um, but yeah, it, it was, it was really amazing. Um, you know, Australia is a lovely place. Um, it's a what rich about, country. What, what, a about, what, about country. The, what about the experience of actually traveling there, right? You, I mean, where, where did you fly through? How, you know, yeah. were you traveling by yourself? You know, was, 17, was, you're, talking about, you're talking about 17, you know, so, you know, ah, you're still yeah. not grown. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I had, you know, uh, experience of traveling before, probably, but not that far, obviously. Mm. But it was, it was long. It was tedious. <laughs> I don't know how I got there, but I got there. You know, I just followed instructions and I, and I got there. Um, so, so you were you by yourself? Yeah, I was. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So from, I had to go to um, Barbados and then, to England that's eight hours from England I had to go to Hong Kong that was 15 hours and then from Hong Kong to Australia that was 12 more hours so yeah. it was a lot of flying <laughs> it was a lot of flying every time I people do it now all I'm seeing is black and more black and more black so like, <laughs> but I mean you know you have your tv and you know you get your three square meals and I can't go wrong with food you know and stuff like that so but it was good. It was a really great experience. Coming back was a little bit more difficult because, I mean, you know, you you know what to expect. You've been through it and you're just like, you know, all the excitement is gone because, you know, you're no longer going there for the first time. But again, it was it was a great experience. You know, it's, it's, it's always nice to, to travel. Yeah, Rajiv, Rajiv just come on from a long flight himself. So you, you guys are group trot, Where did you know, he come from? Kenya. <laughs> it's still not a small Australia, though. <laughs> Kenya is a long way away. It is a long I, way away. I I'm not gonna lie, man. I, I I I went to Dubai a couple of years ago, and I when we were coming back, I was on the plane, right? And fall asleep, wake up, fall asleep, wake up, and then I woke up, right? It's maybe like seven hours into the flight. So I'm, I like I woke up thinking like we almost landed. So I look at the thing. It says it says eight hours to go. I say, oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe I have to be on this plane for that long. It's crazy, man. And, and, then, and then what you can do, I have to just sit there oh. and just, you know, try to do something else. So now, Yeah, on these long, this long flights, you kind of have to plan yourself. You know, either you have your book to read or movies to watch. Some of the guys drink a lot of wine and then knock out. But, yeah, that's not yep. But, yeah. So, so, Nashu, in terms of, you know, right? So I know that, you know, you had the opportunity to just travel with the senior West Indies team to Bangladesh. And I was, you know, like I told you before, uh, I know I watch a lot of cricket. I watch cricket all over, the, you know, all cricket. So I was watching and I saw, I noticed something about you which is not very common. 
Or they didn't play in the two games. I noticed, man, when you guys won, you were like the happiest person on the earth, man. <laughs> I was like, you know, I, I, I was on the TV. I'm like, bro, I don't know if I'll be happy <laughs> like this guy. But... <laughs> it, it, um, it, 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 it's happening, man, for, you know, for your teammates, for, for the success. Always an experience, man, you know, being called yeah. up to the senior team and, and, and traveling with the West Indies team. It, it, was, it was amazing. It was pretty amazing. Um, like I always, you know, told some of the guys, it's, it's one thing to, to sit, you know, on your couch and, and watch these things on TV, but you know, to be a part of it and be in the dressing room and the training and the actual game, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dream come true. And I could see why, you know, a lot of people who've been there, you know, enjoy it and, and try and make the most of it. Um, it. Just everything at that level, you know, the preparation, what it, everything is laid out there for you. You know, the good grounds, you know, good wickets, good umpiring facility. You know, you have people to, carry your bags you hardly see your bag you know you go you put your bag outside and someone takes it and puts it on the bus and then sometimes you know when you're dragging your own bag they, they would be like please please sir bag i was like no it's okay <laughs> <laughs> you know because they love they love cricket and they, you know they always want to help and stuff but yeah you know just to be at that level is it's a really great experience you know the, the, the knowledge and the coaching everybody's willing to help and you know give advice and a lot of the guys, you know, we knew each other because it was a pretty, you know, young group. You know, we knew each other. We play against and with each other at the under-19 level. Um, you know, so that's why, you know, there was so much, you know, joy and, uh, and you know, closeness in, in victory. And, you know, when guys did well, you know, we, gen we genuinely were happy for um, other, you know, individual success. So that's why, you know, there was a lot of, you know, laughing and, and, and smiling and enjoyment. You know? So, yeah. Once yeah, man, I Good. You get the the so you get call. How does yeah. it work from the time you let's say you you back home in Dominica, you know that yeah. you're gonna be going to Bangladesh next month or whatnot. How is it from yeah. how does it work from the time you leave Dominica to the time you meet up with the team to match day? Give us the, the in between for you know the the cricket fans out there who want to know you know what what is it like for the cricketer? Okay. Um. So I think I got called by the chairman of the like, was like the night before Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. So I was I was in shock because I wasn't expecting it. Um, I honestly wasn't. So you know, as I called um, a couple close of my friends, um, and then you know, I let them know what happened. And then, so from there on, it was like I had to kind of seclude myself because. You know, obviously, COVID is was mm -hmm. you know ramp kind of still is rampant at the time. So, I had to kind of seclude myself and not mix and mingle too much because you know we had to get tested, and then you know send in the results and then you're able to travel. So I had to kind of seclude myself. I would go to training, come back, you know, and just like I said, just really limit the amount of people that I come into you know contact with, which is kind of difficult because you know you used to be away from home for so long and then you come home for the Christmas right, and then right, you have right. to be like. Sorry, I can't do this. I can't do that. <laughs> you know, but I mean that's a sacrifice you have to make, you know. Um, but yeah, and then we went to I think we met up in, in Barbados. Um, so some of the guys from Jamaica and the other places they traveled via the US, and then some of us in the Windward Islands uh, and in Barbados, we traveled via England. So everybody, yeah, everybody met up in England and then you know, we met up with the manager and everybody like that. And we, you know, got our uniforms, you know, we signed our forms and stuff like that. Got tested along the way. There was a lot of testing. My uh, nose, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> my, I think I'm, I'm I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm pervious to, to, to the COVID testing now. Every time, yeah, point, right? the, the, yeah, the first test was, it was horrible. But now when you have the test, I just be like, come, just test. Just get it over with. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know I, I, always, to... I always, I always, not, not to, I always wondered about that, you know, like, because in terms of what Roger was asking, you know, like you said, you guys travel, some people from different parts of the Caribbean going for different yeah. routes. Because I always yeah. used to think like, do every, does everybody meet up in Barbados, regardless of where they're from? So yeah, I think before that. Yeah, yeah. Before I think it, it used to be that way. But because 
the flights are limited now, you know, not much traveling. So they have to take the route that's, you know, more simple and closer to the destination. Yes, and then you uh then the, the full squad we met up in Dubai and then you know we went on to where yeah, we went on to Bangladesh from there. And then so once we entered the Bangladesh into Bangladesh, uh, we actually enter a bubble. So we get tested, quarantined for a couple of days, and then from there we are able to move around in the hotel, get tested again, and then when everybody results come back negative, then we can go to training. So the bubble, everybody's in the bubble, the bus drivers, the people who work in the hotels, stay in the hotel, netballers stay in the hotel, security is lined up at the entrance of the hotel, they have big guns, they can't leave. Because wow. when you, when exactly, because there was a lot of back and forth, you know, the tour almost didn't happen. So they had to ensure that everything was in place, you know, that we were safe. And we actually felt really, really safe, you know, on tour. Because everything we we hardly went outside, um, straight up to the bus, outriders all the way. So if we had practice for a game, outriders would go half an hour before us, clear the entire road. Like the travel was long, but they cleared the entire road, and then we just went straight through, practice, and then back. And you know it was it was a lot of logistics, a lot of moving parts, but uh, it was worth it. I mean, you, you sit down. And look at the game on TV, and you just see matter more. But there's so much moving parts. It's you know, it's really amazing. But you know, it's, it's it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, because I know, I know, you know, since COVID, and obviously, you know, for anybody who follows sports, you know, football, cricket, you know, everything kind of stopped, right? I guess you know, March last year, and then things started coming back. Right, cricket is a sport that is kind of naturally socially distanced, so I guess you can play cricket. Except for except when you celebrate you know, the World Weekend or something like that. But I know a lot of the, you know, the, 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 the top players in the world, you know, they've commented on how difficult it is to be in that bubble. And, you know, a lot of the guys have said that, you know, especially, you know, I remember um, Joffrey Archer, right? He, he was in, they were playing, I can't remember who they were playing. And they had to drive from London to, yep. I think, Manchester. And he yep. made a a pit stop or something and then that was it you know he couldn't play the next game like it was that yep. crazy yeah they were, you know so i know a lot of the players including the, you know the west indies players who play in e20 tournaments you know throughout the world and stuff i know they had you know they said about the challenges of that bubble so it's kind of interesting to hear you talk about that aspect of it because like you say a lot of us you know you watch the games we just tune in and you see hey you know 10 o'clock guys gonna bowl yep. a ball and that but all this yep. that goes you know behind that um, so the question I have for you, you know, is I was watching you guys play, you know, this best of best, and you did really well. I, I mean, you, you could have done better, you know, you should have scored 100, but I'll give you a pass, you know. But, you know, I was watching you guys, and, and what do you think the big difference is in the Caribbean for cricket versus, let's say, England or Australia and India? Um, because, I mean, obviously everybody knows, you know, West Indies used to be, I guess, dominating cricket in the 80s and the early 90s. And we're not at that stage right now, but we have a lot of young, talented players. And that shows because even the team that they picked to go to Bangladesh, which guys, a lot of people said they didn't expect to win, you guys beat Bangladesh. So, you know, what do you think is a big difference um, so far you've seen compared to some of the other more uh, less countries in terms of resources? Um, it would be difficult to just pinpoint one exact thing. Um, there's a lot of moving parts when it involves that. But I think for me, the most obvious thing is probably infrastructure. Um, obviously, yeah, you know you want to play well and do well at the highest level, but still, you know, you need some kind of guidance. You know, you need some kind of, you know, mentorship. And, you know, some kind of guideline to follow. Obviously, as a cricketer, you know, you, you can only do so much on your own, but, you know, to have, you know, um, you know, some facilities and I mean, yeah, we do have facilities in the Caribbean. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, there's always room for improvement, but you know, mm -hmm. that's what we have. Um, but I think you know, just be able to fall back on something in terms of um, you know, so for example, uh when we came from Australia, when I came from Australia, guys like Joe and, and the other guys, you know, they were able to go back to, to their counties and their academies and 
you know, and being more specific specific in, in you know how they train and prepare. Um, you know, but obviously, you know, we, we we're not that, you know, fully structured, you know, at at this point in time. But I think you know we're going in a really good direction in terms of having games like these, you know, best versus best. And I think they're trying to make it into um first class game and you know, make it more frequent. So when teams are touring, then you have these games and then you look at you know the best that you have. Um, but then also I think you know just you know the players you know looking at the opportunity and saying hey, I could have a career out of this. You know I need to I need to focus. I need to you know be disciplined in you know in what I do both on and off the field. Um, another thing that I realized, well, you know, when I was in Australia, you know the, the the level of professionalism and you know how serious you know they take the cricket because there's there's a lot of people you know vying for the position and in mm-hmm. India as well. You know mm-hmm. when you have you know billions of people loving the sport. You're gonna have competitions, you know. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, being disciplined about it and you know professionalism in our approach, you know. So and yeah, I think that's like I said, it's it's always difficult to just pinpoint one thing. It's a lot of moving parts, but you know, all in all, I think you know that's some of it. Was there anything specific you'd like to see like happen in in on on our side of the pond, or maybe even like? in Dominica with regarding cricket or or just sports in general? Um I think more com more com yeah more communication you know between the people at the top you know administration and players and I think just putting in place simple things you know having side screens um, you know making sure the 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 pitch is, is ready simple things like that because you know you're you want to play cricket, you know, and yeah, you get a match coming up and then you turn up to the match sometimes and then the pitch is not prepared or, you know, you don't have a side screen. And, you know, this, this, this simple things, you know, they add up to big things. Um, obviously, you know, if you want to take care of the big things, you know, take care of the small things and then it will add up, you know. So, and I think probably more cricket would help. Obviously, as a creator, you, you could only train so much at the end of the day you know, you want to play cricket. So I think, you know, organizing more competitions and you know, just getting players involved because once cricket starts, you know, people will turn up. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. Would you say, I mean, uh, so you played, you know, not not around my time, but you played cricket. I, I, I remember your name, you know, even when you were a young, young guy, you know, playing under 13, hey, Kevin Hodge on the radio, Kevin Hodge, Kevin Hodge, Kevin Hodge. <laughs> but, but, so you played first division in Dominica, right? First division cricket. Okay, yeah, right? I did. Yeah. Do they still have that in Dominica, first division cricket? Uh, I, you see? I think so. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, <laughs> in my opinion, that's part of the problem. The fact that you have to brief to answer that question. Please, you're not sure. <laughs> the, 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 no, right? the thing is, I haven't, I haven't played yes, local cricket in a yeah. long... I haven't played local cricket in a long time. Because I've that's fine. all the time at UWE. And then went to Grenada, and then you know I've just been you know traveling. I so, but I know I know they organized the forty of a competition, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want to put you on this spot too much, you know. I don't want. I don't uh, to, to, to that's fine. That's but... fine. I'm being I'm being I'm I'm being honest. Yeah. Yeah, man. But I mean, because that's one of the things, right? I remember, you know, when I was growing up. I mean, I'm only in my, my mid 30s. So I remember when I was growing up, you know, that was a big thing, you know, football, cricket. You know, yeah. I remember going to watch um like Windsor when Wind before Windsor Park was, you know, what it is now. When Windsor Park was Windsor Park, like something as simple as um the secondary school athletic meet. That was a massive thing, you know. That was a big thing. Yeah. Yes. But I remember us going down from Gandhi in like eight, ten buses of students and Sport and you really stand and banging on the thing and you know all those things were you know it was kind of helping um you know development of sports right you had an interest in sports you know I I don't know if it's the same right I've I, I moved out of Dominica for over ten years now so I, I you know I I cannot really comment too much on it but um like you say so, you know certain things like you know the preparation and stuff I mean I I don't know is that would that would that fall on the 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 the, the responsibility. I mean, I don't want to say the government, but more, of, you know, I guess village councils or, you know, people to push those kind of things. Like, how does that work? I don't know. I, I, I think it would, 
it would fall under obviously the, the, the division, obviously the cricket association or whoever's running the league. You know, it's up to them to make sure that everything is in place. Um, I think there's something going on in in Kalinago territory. Uh, KPL, and I think they're doing a really a really good job there. And every, you know, all my friends have been talking about it. You know, you see videos and stuff like that, and the preparation, and you know, you could see the organization is really good. And people are from all over going up to the Carib territory to play cricket from Grand Bay, from wherever. You know, they're joining the teams, and obviously. Yeah, they, they tell me it's the biggest thing in Dominica right now, you know. So that's that's just, a perfect I, example. I just see somebody comment back in the chat there. So this KPL cricket, Salinago Premier League. Oh wow, home of cricket. Right, ex ex exactly. <laughs> you know, so that's that's a perfect example. And you know, I I would see a lot of my friends post up, you know, videos of the area and people playing cricket, and so many people, you know, obviously that was before COVID. You know, so many people gathering and, you know, it's just the, the, the entertainment, the vibe. So, like I said, once you put something in place and you take care of the little things, people will come, cricket will play. And this is more, of, you know, what we need. Just organize cricket. Obviously, it's easier said than done. But, you know, once you find a way that, you know, the rest will take care of itself. But overall, though, I, 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 I remember um, growing up, right? And I'm going to ask that question more about the culture, right? Growing up in Dominica, that. You know, I'm sure you you got the, you know got that from me. I don't know from who in your family, but somebody say, Kevin, you're not gonna make the morning cricket. Go to school, you know, get a degree or whatever, and get a job, right? <laughs> you know, I remember <laughs> I remember distinctly, right? You know, playing basketball by the Saturday Road in 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 Mountain in in Granby. and we were scared the ball going somebody yard because the person might prick the ball. And, you know, you're playing cricket, you, you hit the ball far, the ball going somebody yard, they're not going to tell you it is because they vex that you're playing cricket by their house. Yeah. You know, it's so, you know, all those things, man. Um, You know, I and, and, I, and then when I go back home, I don't really see that anymore. I don't see people playing cricket by the road. I barely see people playing football. I mean, granted, I guess I go down during Carnival and Independence, so everybody drinking rum at that point. So, right, right. But, you know, but... um. In terms of um, your experience, um, you know, that you would want to share in terms of um, a young person coming up, you know, um, being, you know, involved in sports, not maybe not just cricket, but involved in sports and the opportunities that are out there now um, in the world. What would you say, what would you, you know, if you were going to talk to, you know, speak to a, like a young 10 year old like you going on their first tour, you know, what would you yeah. tell that, that young man? Oh, one sorry, sorry, ladies. Um, I know I know it's not women's month, history month. Sorry. <laughs> well, firstly, I would encourage them to enjoy the game. Um, but I think to this day, that is probably one of the main things that has you know kept me going. Enjoy the game, and just try and be. Obviously, how would I put that? Um, just try and keep things simple. You know, enjoy the game. Try and keep things simple. And as you know, as time goes by, know exactly what you want. It's not going to be easy. I don't want to sound cliche, like just some motivational speech. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's 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 not going to be easy. But you know, if you really want it, you just keep at it. Keep playing. Keep enjoying the game. You know, look to improve yourself in, in whatever way you can. You know, just yeah, that's that's basically it. You know, just be focused there will be distractions. That's always the biggest thing, just distractions. But obviously, you know, as a 10, 11 year old, you probably get distracted every five or 10 minutes, you know? <laughs> so that's where enjoyment of the game. Once you enjoy the game, as you get older, then, you know, you start to become more mature. You understand, hey, I need to do more of this and less of that. And, you know, that's why I need to practice and, you know, stuff like that, you know? So just take it in stages, you know, and enjoy it while it goes along. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That that I mean that song that sounds that sounds very good. I mean for young for young person for young person involved in sports. Um, because you know I make another reference to when I was growing up, like I saw old, but you know I I don't really put cricket that anymore. We, we you know we have leagues in in the United States. Um, right. you know we play in the summertime. A lot of guys from the West Indies come up in the summertime to play in these leagues and. And stuff. So you know, um, but 
you know, I think it's important for us to not get lost in, in the um, discussion of just sports, right? I mean, you, you know, you, for a young man, you know, you obviously, you said you went to school, you know, you're very well spoken, seem to be a very humble young man. You know, I kind of, kind of blowing you on there right now, but, you know, but, you know, I think, I think it's important that you have, because um, again, I, I, like I told you before we spoke, right, you come across as somebody who's likable, right, people like you, you know, you seem like guys, you know, you're always laughing at guys and stuff. Um, the attitude, I feel, um, is very important, right? I mean, they, they used to have this phrase going up, attitude determines your altitude, yeah, if you guys remember that, yeah. you know? So, you know, what, give us a little bit about that in terms of, you know, when you, when you go somewhere and you meet some kind of adversity, you know, and maybe you want to scream or you want to say something, you know, how do you react to that, man? You know, like today, I see you batting. I don't think you're happy with your Disney decision. And, you know, I see you walking off and you're frustrated, but in the back of your mind, you're like, all right, let me just calm down. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I do scream and I do say what I have to say, but probably just not on the field. I would go inside the dressing room and, you know, destroy what I have to destroy. I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, there's always adversity in everything. Um, uh, that's one thing I've had to learn to try and deal with now. It would be hard on myself because I want to do well. I want to do well. But then, you know, there was a time I had to pull back and just, you know, reevaluate and reassess how I, you know, do things. And I tell myself, you know, try not to take myself or, you know, whatever I do too serious in that. I'm only, I'm only human. You know, I would make mistakes. I would not always get it right. But once I focus on, you know, getting better or, you know, doing the simple things. Um, in terms of adversity, one of the things that I try and do, probably not too well, but I, I always try and, you know, say, you know, others have done it before me. Um, you know, they've gone through the same thing and, you know, they've made it. Uh, so who am I? I'm going to go through adversity. So might as well, you know, if they could do it, why, why can't I do it? You know, so I still just, you just keep at it. Because obviously there's been times, uh, even before I started UE, I used to be, you know, training on my own, going at the stadium and stuff. And sometimes I'll just be like, you know, am I doing enough? You know, but yeah. <laughs> You know, at, at that time, you know, I just use the resources that I have and, you know, just, I still enjoy the game, you know, and as time went by, you know, more opportunities opened up. And for me, it's just a matter of, you know, trying to grab the opportunities. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, the most important thing, just understanding, hey, other people have done it, you know, who are you, you know, no need to be hard on yourself, you're going to go through adversity. So, you know, just keep at it and you never know. I don't think we... Well, Actually, ask you that, or you, or you told us. Um, are you an all-rounder, a batsman, a mostly a bowler? Was your your spec? I'm a I'm a batsman, but I bowl as well. Um, okay. and it's something that I've worked at, you know. So it it, it comes out, you know, it my bowling it comes out pretty good, now and then. Not as good as I wanted to, but huh? right or left. Uh, I bowl my left hand and I bat right. So I think they refer to that as ambidextrous or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. All right. So we, we, we have some we have some rapid questions for you there. Okay. So we're gonna we gonna just spit out some stuff on you and want to give us a quick short answer. That sounds right. hostile, rapid. Rapid, we will see you. <laughs> I will I would I will try my best. <laughs> Shoot the shot. All right. All right, Roger. Go ahead. Quickest bowler. Say that again. Quickest bowler. Uh, probably Neil and Pascal. Fuck. What? No, Sh 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 Shannon, Shannon Gabriel. Shannon Gabriel. I was about to say. Most difficult bowler. Mm -hmm. um, change the name for you. Mm. Yeah. Biggest inning. Right. Biggest inning. Uh, I can go um, all the way back to my mom 10 years old on the beach. <laughs> I'll probably, I'll, in context, I'll probably say uh, uh, eight, 
60, 65 versus the India senior team. Um, yeah, when they came to the Caribbean. No, 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 no. You're right now, you're jumping all questions in my brother. Calm down. You asked for the biggest innings. Numbers wise. I put it, I put it in, in perspective. No, 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 no. It's bro. fine, oh, it's fine. Uh, Numbers. 100 and, okay, 165 not out for Dominica versus St. Lucia at Bostejou. Okay. Senior team. No. Yeah. The question we're going to ask you, no, your best eating. Ah, my best eating. Mm. Best, 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 best. Um, I would probably say um, my first first class 100. Uh, that was in St. Thomas versus the Wood Islands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was the big? You say you are batsman who bowls, but what is the biggest wicket you've ever taken? Well, let me, let me um, rephrase the question. Let me rephrase the question. Who was the person you got out that when you were going to bowl to them, you say, Boy, there's no way I'm going to get pissed out, and you got him out? Okay. Um, I would say international. I don't know. I just <laughs> I when I bowl, I don't think I just get anybody out. I just bowl. And if they get out, they get out. Um who let me see I can think of somebody. You'll have me digging my memory box here. Yeah, man. Um it's so many people are already checking. No, yeah, man, that man, that man, that man thinking like he's moving for around there, like you have four hundred tell scalps. You try no, to figure out which one which one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of if I out anybody, you know, big. Um, I don't know. Oh my, um, you played a, you played against a lot of you know very good players in the Caribbean, and you got to some yeah. people out. Ah, I got Karen Paul out. That was oh. in the 50 of a competition. Yeah, that was yeah. as a captain, right? No, as a captain. There you go. Uh, he's a captain of the of the one day and the ODI team, right? Oh, right. All right, what's your favorite food? Favorite food. Favorite food? I like Jamaican food. Akin. Yeah, you can get from Akin sausage or what? Yes, I like Akin sausage. Boy, I give you all every day, my brother. Akin sausage business. I like Jamaican food. I really like Jamaican food, yeah. Favorite destination. Yep. Favorite one? Travel destination. Dubai. Yeah, man. You're doing something. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. It's, nice, place, bro. it's nice, bro. It's, it's nice. It's, it's nice. It's yeah. nice. It's a sight to behold. Yeah. What's your favorite yeah. stadium, though? Stadium, uh, Adelaide Oval in Australia. That's a lovely place. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah, you, you, have you ever played in England? No, I've uh, no, unfortunately not. I've never played there. Okay. Hopefully soon. Oh, you have you have a couple yeah. questions in the chat there. Somebody asked you, uh, where do you see yourself in five to ten years? Um, obviously a permanent uh, fixture on the West Indies team. Um, yeah, in terms of professionally, yeah, a permanent fixture on the West Indies team. Obviously, right now there's a lot of you know, competition. So it's something that you have to work really hard for. And then, you know, once you get it, you try and stay. So it's one thing to get there, but to stay is even harder. So, yeah. I don't like, I, I don't like that word you just used there, you know. What's that? Try and stay. You don't go try here. Yeah. When you get there, make sure they, if they drop you, it's a very hard decision. Uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying? You can, it's difficult to get there. You have to make sure they keep you there. Well, yeah, that's the goal. Uh, five years, you know, be, be a permanent fixture in the Western East team. Yeah. Yeah, you had you had a you had a good um you know showing of yourself um in, in the best versus the best. Congratulations on that. I know your team won. Um, yeah. Uh, at uh, Craig Graff with um eleven. Yeah. Um, yeah. I saw I saw you got the the, the opposition captain you know, out. You like to talk about the Karen, but you get out. But I I know more about you than yourself. I'm looking like. Uh, I try I try something, man. It work out so. What can you say? 
Somebody ask a question here in the chat. How do you deal with low scores at times to bounce back in the next game? Uh, I just forget about it. Uh, one of the things I try and do or remind myself is try not to get too high when I perform well and try not to get too low when I do bad. Um, also, they say you will, not they say, but you, you fail more than you, you succeed in, 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 in sports, in cricket. So it's just a matter of trusting your, your process. You know, you have something in plan, you know, how you train, how you pre prepare. And for me, that's a big thing, you know, training and preparation. I really take that to heart. You know, I like to be specific in how I go about doing that. So if I know I'm, I'm batting well and stuff like that, if I fail, I try and, you know, figure out or understand what it is I did wrong and just try not to do that the next time. But I know eventually, and if I keep doing the right things, then everything will fall into place and just relax and enjoy. I have a follow-up question to that. How is it... Um... So do, do, do the players pay attention to, to social media a lot? And what is the reaction? Hmm. Get like criticism, like, you know, but West Indies is real shit today, you know, West Indies just, <laughs> like, is just nonsense. Like, do you guys, do guys go through their, you know, go for Facebook and stuff at the end of a game? And um, he, Yeah, I, a lot of guys go through their Facebook and read comments and stuff. Me, personally, I try not to, even if I... I do, but I try not to. So I delete Instagram like often. Like I would just delete it and because I try not to stay on it too much because it's you know it's a social media age and you, you could you could really get lost in there and just so I you know I always try and find productive things to do. So I read a lot. I love to read. <laughs> what, so what, I was what, 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 what are you? um Think like a champion, like Dr. Rudy Webster. Mm. So at times I would I would do Instagram for like a week, you know, a couple of days a week, um, and just just stay off it. And then I would go back, check it out. If I post something, post something, you know, and then delete it again because once it's there, I would probably want to go on it all the time. And to me, that's my perspective. It's not healthy to just be on there all the time and just going through all that stuff, you know. And you could be doing other things. So, but yeah, I do go go to social media and Facebook now and then, and write, read and browse, catch up, and then yeah. So I try not to be on it twenty four seven. That's an important point, you know, Raj, if you brought up there, because I, I I follow, I subscribe to one of his teammates, Josh Reda Silva, the keeper from Trinidad. I I follow him on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel where he yeah, yeah, of, yeah, like yeah. a like a vlog. Yeah, you know, and so you know, it seems like he's into that that video and stuff. But you know, you know, like you say, I think, um, you know, like of anything, right? Too much of one thing is not good, right? So you have to just yes. kind of moderation, right? I mean, I imagine mm -hmm. it'd be tough to be reading about yourself all the time, like when people say, like, oh, like you know, he should have done this better in that innings, or you know, he should have. Place is shot better or whatnot. Like, you know, if you're scrolling through that after a game, like, you know, you're probably questioning yourself like the whole time, like, yeah, Mr. Probably right. Yeah. Or, it's on your mind the whole time. I mean, I don't know yeah. you, you, you're a human being, you know, like everybody else. So, you know, you start seeing good things about yourself. You might start believing it. You might start dying into the hype. Just like you start seeing bad things, you might start believing that too. Right? Right. Yeah, it's true. But also, I mean, there's always two sides to the coin. So, like, for example, like people would be, you know, probably looking at the live right now. They, you know, want to get to know who is Kavim or what he's been up to. So when I travel or I'm playing, I, I would, I would post. You know, I like to post things and keep people, because I've been posting, you know, on my stories and Instagram probably since I was at UE or even before, you know, training and stuff. And then, you know, now I'm, you know, playing at, at a higher level. You know, I still want to let people know what's up. You know, what's and what, what I'm doing or anything like that. So, and I don't want to be selfish about it and just be off social media and just cut off everybody. You know, I, I kind of think that's selfish. You know, I still post and let everybody know, hey, this is what's up. I did this and stuff like that. But yeah, that's that's all it is. You know, just just to keep people in the loop and then yeah, don't let it consume me. All right, we have a couple more questions in the chat there before we close up. Um, hmm, let's see which one you want to go. Oh, okay, it's a good one. How do you feel about the chance to play 
Dr. Silis. I've heard other people's opinion, but I want to hear. I want to hear yours. That person sound like they know you. Mm. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, oh. Say that again. What is my? How do you feel about the chances to play for the West Indies? I think you kind of went over that, but oh, you know, oh my chances. Yeah. Oh, I, to be honest, I think it's all in my hands because I think at this point in time, it's like they're, they're creating opportunities to let people put themselves on exhibition and show you know what they can do. Um, that's one of the reasons why I really you know tried my best to. I tried to grit down and actually get the score, you know, because it's important, you know, you put your name in the hat and, mm -hmm. you know, put yourself up for selection. So to be honest, uh, I mean, you know, there's always saying, you know, she has some selection is, is, uh, is kind of biased sometimes, but I believe, you know, you, you make a, you make a claim for yourself and, you know, put everything in your hands, do, the, do what you can, so for me, I like to go by the motto, control the controllables. My controllables is, you know, being disciplined, being respectable, playing in the spirit of the game, and obviously scoring runs. You know, so once I do that, then, hey, everything else is out of my hands. So my chances is uh, as good as I make them. Simple as like that. But, but, but also, though, I mean, you, you mentioned about the biasness. I mean, for people like me who always followed West Indies cricket, it always felt like, you know, the guys from the bigger islands, I guess you could see, or the, you know, got majority of the chances. Um, I mean, coming from, you know, where's the name of the place in Dominica you from again? And 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 Trisville, and you know, and Trisville going to Dom, you know, playing for Dominica, then the Windward Islands, you know, now you know, vying for a place in the West Indies team, you know. Has, is that something that, that's on your mind in terms of, you know, being from a small country and, you know, how does that affect your chances of being picked? Uh, um, yeah, obviously, you know, I always try and, well, always try. I always remember where I come from and what I represent. So I think that's in my mind based on representing the people rather than thinking of it as an obstacle to get where I'm coming from mm -hmm. for selection. So yeah, I use it as motivation. I know Dominicans are proud people, resilient people. You know, they love the cricket. You know, every time cricket is in Dominica, the stadium is rampacked. You know, so that's always on my mind, you know, who I represent, you know. Um, so that I use that as a motivation to, you know, train, to play and, you know, represent as best as I can, rather than using it as, shh, I'm from Dominica. Uh, nope, I don't. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's, that's good to hear. So with that said, guys, we've come to the end of our conversation with Mr. Hodge. Um, you know, we would like to have him back after he's, you know, scored his first 100 for the West Indies. You know, so we put that out there that, you know, he talk the thing will be the first place he comes to speak after he, he, he gets that accomplishment. All right. Um, I, and I kind of put him on the spot, but, you know, it is what it is. Um. With that said, everyone, um, we want to thank everyone for tuning in. You, you know, we had a you know a few viewers tonight, and a lot of people, um, you know, had questions, um, for Mr. Hodge. Um, we have a couple more questions. Yeah, I don't want to cut anybody' questions off. Let me see. Let me see what we have there. Oh, what is your mindset like when you are the crease? Ah, uh, okay. It depends on the stage of the game. But I just keep my mind blank. Um, I would have a general idea of what the bowler is doing. But I, when he's at the top of his mark, when he's about to deliver, my mind is just clear. And then I would just react to whatever happens. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why I try and I train so much. You know, I spend a lot of time in the nets. So, you know, there's something called muscle memory. You know, so you don't have to think too much. Whatever come, I just react to it and just try and be consistent with it. If I, I mean, if the, the situation might change, where I have to premeditate or do something else. But other than that, I just keep my mind clear and just react to whatever comes. Yeah. Most of memory. Raji would know about that. Raji never played a sport in his life. <laughs> <laughs> of course, man. I, I, I. 
I toy a bit with tennis and volleyball and and, and for in fact I didn't play volleyball because there were guys in the class saying that um volleyball was for girls. They had chosen five of us. <laughs> it was five of us from two classes to play volleyball. And I every sports day I did not participate in that because them fellas, the rest of the guys in the class were saying volleyball was for girls. So well, you, you can't, you can't worry. that 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 <laughs> Uh, if I had a chance, I lose it. <laughs> what, what is your what is your your um your thoughts on or what are your thoughts, I should say, on possibly one day playing in the IPL or one of those big T20 tournaments? Hey, it's possible. I think the most important thing is um setting up that base. Um obviously I think starting off playing for the West Indies would open up all the doors. Obviously, IPL is probably one of the biggest, you know, leagues in the world. And they would not just pick anybody just like that. They have to make sure, hey, you're the best of the best and you have what they can offer. So playing, starting to play at the international level, then, you know, that would open up some doorways for that. Uh, but as, at this point in time, you know, if it happens, it happens. But I'm just focused on, you know, playing for West Indies. And then, like I said, from there, you know, obviously, doorways will open. I have a weird question for you. Because I, I, you know, I play cricket too, you know, a little bit, you know. But was there somebody where you, were, you know, you filled in, and the person hit the ball, and you wonder, you know, what the hell? like this person hit the ball, a hard boy. Like, yeah, a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. So give give me a couple names. Ah. Uh, uh. Sammy, Sammy hits the ball pretty hard. He hits it like a rocket. Um, sometimes you just don't want to be behind that ball, but it, sometimes you have to just take it and probably go put your hand in some ice after. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's terrible, but, you yeah, know, that's, that's a, how it is. We had a debate in a, in a, in a chat, um, a WhatsApp chat, um, a cricket chat we have. Um, who hit the ball harder, Chris Gale or Kyron Pollard? Oh, that's a tough one. I, I, I can't answer that. Both of them hit the country mile. So, uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's a difficult one. Or I didn't know. The other name that came up was Chris, it was Chris Gale, Pollard, or um, Dre Russ, Russell. Yeah, I'll probably say Russell. Yeah, yeah probably yeah. Russell. I don't know. But I, who I, am I, I to judge? I feel like, I feel like, from watching on TV, I feel like Karen Pollard to me has the combination of timing and power. Yeah. I feel yeah, like Russell. Does. I feel like Russell just muscles the ball. He just, he just, <laughs> he just bludgeons, man. He's, you know, he just trying to hit the ball as hard as he possibly can. Yep. You know, yep. And I feel like Gale also has that that mixture of you know timing and and power as well, natural power. You know. Um. All right. So, listen, guys. It was very much fun talking to Mr. Hodge. You know, we we, we hope to have him back. Like I said, after he scored his first hundred for the West Indies team. You know. Um. Which I, I know he'll be picked to play against Sri Lanka and he'll score 100 against them in the next couple of weeks. Right? Right, Kevin? That is the theory, right? Um, guys, a couple of things we wanted to go over. Um, we're going to have a show in uh, next week where we're going to be talk next Wednesday, where we're going to be talking about women excellence. You know, this is the Women's History Month and we want to make sure that we highlight you know, women, not just professional women, but moms and you know, you know, all the women who are doing great things. So we're going to have a few guests on um, and talk about, um, you know, women and, and, and basically none of us would be here without our women, right? Like Kavim say, he was like the only man in his family, you know, so women played a pivotal role in, in his life as, as a lot of them do in our lives. Um, so we're going to be talking about, um, talking with a few women next week. So look out for the flyer. Um, another thing you guys have to look out for is we promised it and it's here. We have some merchandise that's available um, through our website. Um, we will be posting that in the chat and we will also be posting that on all of our social media platforms. Um, we be, be aware to check out the video on YouTube in the next couple of days. Um, if you guys want to go back and look at the interview, if Kevin himself wants to go and see if he was looking like he's nervous, you can go back and watch it. <laughs> I was. I always am. Oh, we're talking about nervous. So, so let me ask you when, you: when you go back now, I use 
do you still are you still nervous like boy i don't want to take a doc i don't want to take a doc um i am nervous but i try not to make it get the better of me if i'm human if i'm not nervous then something is wrong mm-hmm. so the most important thing is just to try to channel that and you know you know what's just use to react faster because it's natural but obviously you don't want to be nervous for the entire innings you know you get off strike your body relax then you're good to go but there's always yeah. nerves at the beginning so yeah yep all right so guys like i said check out the merch we'll be posting that in the chat um we'll be posting that on all of our social media websites i mean social media um platforms, apps, app, platforms i should say um we also gonna have you know a lot of other designs and other graphics and stuff. Try to make it nice for you guys to to support the show. Um, you know, like we say, we always try to push positive vibes and you know try to highlight the people who are doing great things. You know, in and out of the country, well, of Dominican background. But we also look into potentially one day, you know, kind of push it out into the, into the wider Caribbean and you know and highlight some of our or black people who are doing great things all around the world, all right? So with that said, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. We want to thank Kevin for coming on. Um, okay. Hopefully, you know, we can keep this going and, you know, we see Kevin make it to the to the big leagues and, you know, travel the world with the West Indies team. You know, we look forward to seeing that, man, you know? Um, so everybody, on behalf of me and my co-host, we want to thank you guys and we want to say you guys can have a good night. Thank you. Good night.